Motorsports, and a lot of you have had some questions from the YouTube channel. We're going to answer a bunch of those today. All right, Aussie Shane, you have a really good question. You wanted to know, wouldn't it be better for the cars to get a rolling start? And also, to add to that, you wanted to know, don't most jet engines uh, achieve their maximum efficiency above 80 kilometers per hour? You are right on both points, actually. However, in drag racing, of course, we have... Uh, uh, we don't have the advantage of that rolling start. Our drivers will try to actually stage the car with the engine and the throttle at full power, uh, no afterburner at this point, and they're staging the car trying to get the best traction on the drag strip with the throttle, at wide open throttle, which is a, I keep doing that with my hand because it's a hand throttle, but um, uh, and then what they ideally would do would be release the brakes and then hit the afterburner at the exact same time. That gives you that, of course, all important reaction time in drag racing. The other part of your question was, don't the engines achieve their maximum power above 80 kilometers per hour? You're absolutely right. That engine, uh, the air going down the engine inlet uh, is very best. Once the car is rolling, it'd be just like an airplane. Once the airplane's rolling uh, on the takeoff roll, um, the engine makes more power. It's still an internal combustion engine, and the one beside me is actually one of those General Electric J85s. This particular section is that compressor section, so this would be the front of the engine. This one's sitting upright right now. But uh, coming into the air coming into the engine, of course, uh, the more air you can get into any internal combustion engine with uh, volumetric efficiency, I guess you would call that, the, the more power you can make with that engine. And so uh, the eight stages of the General Electric J85 um, we can compress more air if we have ram air effect, to your point. Now, a jet, a jet dragster, a traditional style jet dragster with the driver's compartment in front of the engine, of course, we have some air management to deal with there. You've seen some jet dragsters, not from Larson's, but some other uh, uh, operators that put the driver's compartment off to the side. Sometimes we call those sidewinder jet dragsters. And the, the idea is that the engine is going to get a better shot of that free stream air, we would call it. So good arguments either way, you know, you have to push yourself through, the, through more air with the driver's compartment off to one side. Quite often on the opposite side of the car, they'll put a piece of body, a fairing or something. And so um, either way, you know, one way or the other, you uh, end up uh, with hopefully a good breathing jet car that can leave the starting line real fast. Thank you, Shane. Jeff Reno, you had a good question too, and uh, your question was, how the heck don't we burn up the asphalt or concrete at the beginning of the track? That's a really important question, and yes, I think I do remember seeing a video of a semi-truck that had some uh, uh, damage behind it, uh, one of the tracks. Um, most jet teams will go in uh, at the beginning of a race, and we will actually look at the material that the track surface is made of. Um, if it's asphalt, of course, that's a that's a petroleum product, right? So there's probably some gravel that makes that asphalt or little rocks and some uh, tar and some oil-based materials. And uh, even though we really wouldn't necessarily catch it on fire, we can burn some of that away. We wouldn't ever want to damage any of that asphalt behind, uh, you know, behind us with that flame that comes out. Concrete, interesting as well. Now, if it's concrete, concrete, if you think about it, is porous like a sponge, right? And so, the ideal situation, believe it or not, would be if there was no water in the concrete at all. A lot of times you'll see the track operators or people on the starting line spraying the surface down behind the jet car. Now, in the water box uh, of the drag strip um, where the cars do their burnouts, of course, all day long probably they've been spraying that down with water. So the concrete is really saturated with water. And what we'll try and do is we will try and limit the amount of heat that we put into that because when that water turns into steam, you think, you know, steam locomotives, steam engines, all anything that's powered by steam is very powerful. We don't want to boil that water in the asphalt and turn it into steam. Otherwise, there's a chance that we can maybe pop a very, it, it's a very thin layer, and I suppose in reality it doesn't hurt the track per se, but we don't want to damage anything at all. So. Uh, sometimes we will just take the layer of rubber off the top there, back in the water box, not on the racing surface itself, but um, 
Uh, we really try hard to not do it, have any effects on that racing surface. And so it's, it's kind of a judgment call on the part of the team and the driver. Do we roll forward when we're doing the smoke and fire show, that big bushy flame that's mostly done at an engine idle, or do we stay back? And in, in most cases, the Larson teams, we will try and have the, our flame of the afterburner when we're doing our smoke and fire show back behind the water box so that we really don't affect any of the water box at all. Another really good question that you had was, why can't we use a bigger tire like a traditional dragster tire? Good question, actually. Um, you may not know that jet dragsters and jet funny cars do not have a differential. They don't have a transmission. In fact, uh, the Florida Tech jet dragster here, you can see I can roll this very easily with one hand back and forth. The cars don't weigh much at all. So we don't use a traditional drag racing tire, a wrinkle wall slick, sometimes people call them. That would be a traditional drag racing rear tire. What we use is a stock car tire. And the, uh, right now, Goodyear is the only brand that has a uh, tire that's approved for jet cars. Uh, it's basically a stock car tire that the Goodyear company has researched to see that it will also stand the, the, um, uh, the you know, the parameters that a jet car would have to have to use. Interestingly enough, one of the things about the tires that we have, since they're not wheel driven, we are, um, it's not unusual for a jet car to still see from the, from the mold when the tire was made, the little, the little steam uh, uh, vent pieces here that are sticking out, the casting line that runs down the tire uh, is, is long as even a year after we've started to use the tires. So the tires don't wear out like a normal drag racing tire. And since the car's not real wheel driven, we want a more rigid sidewall. So the sidewall of a stock car tire works really good for us. Now Larson Motorsports, we primarily use bias ply tires. Um, they are, yeah, they're probably close to the same cost as a, as a radial tire. Radial tires are also approved for certain part numbers. But uh, on, the, on the jet dragsters and jet funny cars, we, we use Goodyear tires on the back. Now we can use other brands of tires on the front. In our, in our case, on our jet dragsters, the front tires that we use are uh, top, it's the exact same part number as a top fuel tire. Um, but those are not spec to us. It's just what we use, choose to use here. Um, jet funny cars use a traditional, quite often traditional funny car tire as well. Hope that answers your question on why we don't use a wider traditional drag racing slick, if you will. God's country bumpkin, that's a, that's a good question you had. Could a jet car run on hydrogen? And the answer is uh, absolutely yes. Now it's an internal combustion engine. If you could manage any fuel correctly, including hydrogen, you could, probably, you could run the engine on uh, any one of those fuels. In fact, a lot of times we, uh, I always joke with people here, if you do a tour at the shop, sometimes you'll hear me say that these engines, you could run them on bean burritos if you could ram them through the, through the fuel lines. And I guess I'm only semi-joking about that because uh, as an internal combustion engine, there's a bunch of jet engines that run on gasoline. There's definitely jet engines that run on uh, propane, uh, natural gas. Uh, there's power plant applications with the uh, Pratt & Whitney JT12 or J60 that's a very popular jet car engine that uh, are actually natural gas engines. Um, so as an internal combustion engine, it can run on nearly any type of fuel. Um, and uh, so, so I guess the answer to your question is yes, if you could manage the hydrogen correctly, and I don't know that that's ever been done, but if you could manage the hydrogen correctly, yes, you definitely could run a jet engine on hydrogen. Mike McKay, you had a really good question. How hot is the nozzle on the back of the afterburner at the end of a run? Uh, undoubtedly, you've seen in our videos that that nozzle turns cherry red hot, maybe some other jet car videos. That's not unusual for that to do. That material in our case is made of 321 stainless steel and it's about, it's 16 gauge, so it's about 60 thousandths of an inch thick. Um, it does run cherry red hot, and uh, we've never measured the surface temperature of the nozzle itself. However, uh, we can tell you that the flame being blue and white hot if on an optimum tune-up uh, is going to exceed 2500 degrees Fahrenheit. Hopefully that answers your question. Send us more. Uh, we, we love answering.